Hello, uh, greetings from Moscow, Russia, uh, and welcome to our online streaming session of Master and Bachelor Programs of Faculty of Business and Management, HEC University. It's six o'clock in Moscow, and we're here in our modern campus of Faculty of Business and Management, located in 19th century historic buildings on Shabalovka Street. My name is Dmitry Knatko, and I'm a Deputy Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs. Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Anna Griznova. I'm Associate Dean for International. Originally from Siberia, I came to Moscow many years ago to get my master's degree. And since then, I'm in and out of the city that became my second home. Today, I'm very excited to share with you my experience and my passion for the education. I guess the fact that you're here today with us means that you are interested in investing into your education and into your future. And most probably you have tons of questions for us about the university, the school and the program. We will begin shortly with the presentations. But before that, I would like to know who is listening to us today and who is with us. So please take this opportunity to type your name and the city you're currently in into the chat so that we know who you are, where you are and know the geography of our audience today. We will provide you with some information about the university. Then we will get to some more specific questions about the business school and the programs. And then we'll get to the very ground information about admissions and uh, applications. We will begin this session with the video that our team prepared for you in advance. And then we'll get to Q&A session. We will take your questions. Please do not hesitate to type into the chat your questions anytime you have them. We will answer them right after the presentations we prepared for you. We expect to conclude the session in about 80, 90 minutes. So without a further ado, let's begin and let's dive into the great experience and opportunities we can offer for you here in Moscow. We see that there are a lot of people from Russia and Moscow, actually. But for those of you who are looking at this presentation from further away, um, moving to Moscow and Russia can be daunting at first glance. And uh, Russia and Moscow have always been on off the beaten path. And it's quite a unique place, uh, we know that. It's a place where East met West, both culturally and politically. And uh, Moscow uh, in itself is a very unique and modern city. It has, it offers very great urban living conditions, uh, one of the most advanced in the world transportation infrastructure, a fantastic and vibrant cultural scene that combines the best of the old and the most exper experimental of the new. Uh, and also, uh, this city is great for its uh, 
approach to invite younger people and to support startups, innovations, and possibilities to generate new information. Uh, we at HSE University use all that, to, and we attract uh, the best young professors from all around the world. And later today, you will meet with some of our professors and with academic directors of our programs, but uh, also with our students and alumni. And the first person whom I'd like to present to you uh, today is Ekaterina Ivanova. Ekaterina is probably one of our most international faculty members. She literally lives in between Russia and Austria. We asked Ekaterina to share with you her thoughts about studying in Russia, about stereotypes about Russia and her general observation about get why it might be valuable to get a degree in Russia. So studying in Moscow, why we have to offer you a unique experience. First of all, HSE. Here you have access to best knowledge, expertise, research findings from the leading Russian scientists. So you can take part in the conferences, workshops, seminars, um, do studies yourself first. Secondly, Moscow has such a rich cultural life. You can experience going to exhibitions of contemporary art. You can go to theaters. You can enjoy classical music at the conservatory or even the nightlife. Depends on what you like, but it's all here. Outside of Moscow, you can travel. You can just cover St. Petersburg, the Golden Ring, or go somewhere in the south of Russia and see the beauty of Caucasus, for instance. So it's all here, uh, it's near, and uh, that's what you can do. Since I'm also teaching at HSE, I love international classes. I think that's the best experience I have as a teacher when I have people with different perspectives talking about contemporary issues such as sustainability in my case, discussing it, learning best examples, finding sustainable innovations in Russia, talking about circular economy, learning from European perspective, from American perspective, Africa, Asia, it's all here, you know? It's a fantastic enriching environment that you can experience being at HSE because the unique feature of our university is that we have truly the best environment because of the people who study here, who teach here and who make it possible for HSE to be such an exciting place. So hopefully we'll see you here too. Finally, talking about Russian culture. There are a lot of stereotypes about Russians. Yeah, bears on the streets. We don't really have them. Uh, but it could be cold. That's true. This May, it was because of the Arctic air. It was quite cold. But apart from that, uh, you know, Russians are really nice and open people. And if you're here, do try authentic Russian cuisine. Go to restaurants like Lavka Lavka, one of my favorite ones, which tries to restore traditional Russian cuisine. Or, you know, hang out with your friends. Go to their homes, experience true Russian hospitality. That would be something that you can really enjoy because hosting people, learning other cultures, that's part of who we are. That's what makes us such an attractive destination to be at, no matter what happens politically. So hopefully see you in Moscow. Our faculty is one of the biggest units in the university and there are more than 4,000 students, Russian and international students, that learn here about business, management, uh, digital analytics and business informatics. And uh, this year we offer three programs that are taught entirely in English, one bachelor and two master programs. And today we are very excited to share with you one of the latest news. This year HEC University announced ambitious plans for creating a world-class graduate school of business. 
It's going to be a dynamic and agile business incubation hub that will give to the students the best from the worlds of academia and business with an international perspective. Yes, and for such a unique educational hub, uh, we have a number of very uh, specific features. And these specific features, they include also a very interesting and advanced approach in education that is valuable for our student. The, the approach that is um, giving the possibility to the student to learn and get the competences, the practical competences, uh, just from the very beginning, building skills through the approach which is called learning by doing. And what it means basically that what we try to do in addition to fundamental lectures, we try to give the students a chance to dive into a real life decision-making situations in different consulting projects, in simulations, in actual research projects with actual companies, and these are largest international companies and startups, the innovative startups that work with us with HSE. We all live in a very interconnected world. So another feature of a new business school is that its program will be international driven. Thanks to our network of leading global business schools, we offer every and each student an opportunity to go for exchanges abroad and to spend a semester abroad and dual degree options. Another feature is the connection to the business community. Business School is the priority partner of leading Russian and international companies. That allows us to provide our students with the best possible practical experience with internships and career support services. And last but not least, we've got a team of highly qualified, very enthusiastic and devoted international and Russian professors doing top class research and having lots of practical experience that they're able to bring to the classroom. Well, indeed. And having said all of that about our business school, I think it's high time that we give you a little tour around. And as I told you, we are located in a very specific and historic uh, set of buildings on Shabalovka. And uh, I want to ask our colleague, Kirill Stitsenka, uh, Director of the uh, Digital Technologies for Education Center, to show you around. So please, Kirill. Good afternoon, dear applicants. We are at Shablovka campus, where the Faculty of Business and Management is located. Today, I'm going to take you on an online campus tour. Let's go. Now we are in one of the lecture halls of Shablovka campus. This hall is designed for 230 seats. Here we usually hold the faculty's open days. Lectures of visiting professors and our partners also take place here, as do lectures of faculty of business and management. Let's take a look at the library. Let's go. Shablovka campus has 63 classrooms with modern IT and multimedia facilities. These are lecture halls, seminar halls and computer classes for practical sessions. That is where students acquire knowledge and experience necessary for further work and employment.
We are in studio of video production and webinars of Faculty of Business and Management. This studio has modern video equipment, which enables us to record video lectures, create media content, and hold webinars for you, dear students. Faculty of Business and Management cooperates with more than 250 Russian and international companies, such as Sberbank, Deloitte, L'Oreal, SAP, Oracle, etc. Come and study with us. Welcome to Faculty of Business and Management. Dear students, oh, dear guests of our, uh, you see this is a Future. tradition of a professor, <laughs> it's always to the students who you talk to, uh, dear guests of our uh, streaming, it's very nice that you're here and that you're asking questions, please don't lose the chance to talk with the guests, later we'll have a Q&A session as Anna have mentioned, so please type the questions, we'll be reading them and we'll be reacting to them later on in the streaming. Uh, but um, uh, continuing what Anna had said about the uh, importance of partnerships, uh, what we want to mention is that the ecosystem of corporate partnerships and the connection of university to the job opportunities, to the career lanes that the university can offer to its students, it's a very important part of the value that students can get from while uh, studying somewhere. Especially in the business school. Yeah, and spe specifically in the business school. I absolutely agree with you. Our deputy dean for corporate relations and alumni uh, uh, will tell you some information about uh, what opportunities and what support uh, Faculty of Business and Management gives you. Hello, my name is Alexander Dinin and I'm Deputy Dean responsible for Corporate and Alumni Relations. At the Graduate School of Business, we pay priority attention to developing a comprehensive corporate ecosystem or a network of relationships with leading international and Russian corporations who regard us as a preferred source of young talent to employ. We construct such interaction between the employer and the student from the very first year of studies so that you have time and opportunity and necessary career mobility skills and instruments to find a job of your dream and to build a prosperous career. Whichever industry you take, we work closely with only prime employers such as, for example, McKinsey, PwC or KPMG in management consulting, Microsoft, Oracle or SAP in information technologies, L'Oreal, Coca-Cola and Unilever in fast-moving consumer goods and many, many others. I just named a few. Hundreds of our alumni who achieved significant success in professional careers, entrepreneurship or public activities will share their secrets of success with you and will help you navigate in today's job market. We're looking forward to welcoming you at our Master in International Management program. Thank you. Second professor whom we would like you to meet today is Yuri Timofeyev. Yuri Timofeyev will tell us how about graduating from a PhD program in Germany. He got recruited by us on a job fair in Brussels. Yuri will share his experience and tell you about the possibilities offered by Higher School of Economics.
Hello, my name is Yuri Timofeyev. I work as an assistant professor at School of Business Administration in Moscow campus of the Higher School of Economics. Today, I will tell you why you may wish to consider our business school as a potential place for your business education. Before we start, let me provide a few details about myself. After receiving my doctoral degree from Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, Germany, I attended a job fair in Brussels. There, I met Professor Nikolai Filinov, the head of School of Business Administration. Uh, he invited me to present my research agenda in Moscow. Following this presentation, I got a job offer and decided to join the High School of Economics. Since uh, 2018, I have been teaching courses in English for bachelor and master students. In addition, I supervise students' qualification works in the area of my professional interests, which is related to drivers and consequences of unethical behavior in business and management. To begin with, my colleagues and I myself are highly concerned in delivering a top quality education and uh, professional training in the area of business and management. Who we are, you may ask. Importantly, we are known as a community of educators sharing the following values. First, professionalism. Second, flexibility. Third, innovativeness. When you join any of our programs, you will have a unique opportunity to enjoy the benefits of cooperation. Yes, let me underline this. Cooperation. With internationally recognized researchers and invited experienced instructors from the leading Russian and international corporations. In addition, along with mastering compulsory core courses, you will be able to take some elective courses. We are proud that many of them are offered in English as some core courses. Definitely, we aim to train professional managers and successful entrepreneurs. Most of our alumni easily get attractive position in the leading corporation or succeed as entrepreneurs. By the way, we have our own business incubator, which you might be interested to look at. Some of you will be also interested in taking a semester abroad. A piece of good news here is that our university has established partnership with some leading European universities. For example, our students can take a semester at the University of Ghent, Belgium. Last but not least, for international students, our university offers uh, rooms in our dormitories. In the end, I would like to say that some people are afraid of Russia. However, all international students whom I have worked with here told me that they have made a good choice. Thus, we will be pleased to welcome you as our new students uh, in the nearest future. Goodbye. We are very proud to have such fantastic people as Yuri and Ekaterina in our team. But we are even more proud to have fantastic alumni. Our graduates work all around the world in largest international companies and innovative startups all around the world in uh, the most advanced spheres of uh, digital economy. And uh, what we want to show you now is that the experience the students get in the university uh, gets a fantastic value on the market. Uh, the um, uh, fantastic uh, framework that we give through the lectures, that unique uh, international mindset, uh, is transferred to people who go on the market and have very high value and very, very high demand. Uh, our One of the graduates of Faculty of Business and Management, Alexander Nikolaev, will share his perspective why graduates of HEC and Faculty of Business and Management are so valued on the market. Higher School of Economics provides one of the best um, business educations in Russia and uh, in uh, CIS. So if you would like to get your Eastern European education, especially business education, the only place to go, of course, is Higher School of Economics. As well, Higher School of Economics provides you a really unique ability to be calm and always have a, uh, and always have a cold mind at the moment when uh, you have to decide something quick, quickly or when the situation is really stressful. You still have your peace of mind thanks to Higher School of Economics. 
you'll be able to understand how the Eastern European customer thinks, what they do, how they choose the product, how they actually they function inside this complex system, how they, how they purchase, what their purchasing behavior. And actually that's going to be a really huge advantage the moment you will uh, go on, on interviews and the moment you will start working in big multinational companies. Because companies like HR and management afterwards will be able to understand that actually this lady or guy, they understand both spheres, they understand Western and Eastern customers, and they can deliver equally high value for both of those, which is really, really beneficial and a really big uh, advantage comparing to others. Another graduate of our school is Jean-Serge Sagbo. He's a director of innovations and design in Visa Simia, and he will tell us about unique business culture in Russia, his student experience and global graduate community of HEC University. Russia is a different market in uh, many different ways. Uh, here we see that when it comes to business, we usually got to deal with different type of uh, stakeholders, di different culture of decision making. The same things we actually see in uh, academic space, especially in high school of economics. It happens so that uh, the way we describe that community in university is being very progressive. Uh, you usually is not the smartest person in the room, which is a good thing. Uh, I believe in terms of you know personal development, and uh, you always have people to look up to in front of you. That's great, and um, yeah, I think that diving into that unique atmosphere, uh, you know, just learning from people around you, being a part of that very dynamic. Um, community is a big part of um, what makes that university really really awesome for the students especially for international students sometimes you talk to someone from Singapore office like I did at the beginning of this week and uh, yes yeah, suddenly that person be like yeah I studied in your in, in, in your um, university back in the days so you'd be like oh my god literally what are the odds and uh, yeah, this way, I mean, working in Visa, I see that this is a truly global community and you always have a lot of common topics to discuss as a, uh, you know, former higher school of economics student. Back in, uh, I think it was third year in, um, in my bachelor's studies, I've been in our building in Shabalovska and I had to go mm -hmm. to Semenovska for, um, f what was it, mathematical methods or something. Uh, and then suddenly I saw that uh, strategy partners group, consulting company, uh, they have some sort of a transport workshop or something. So yeah, uh, just on the spot decision. I decided to skip the class and uh, visit the workshop. There, I not only visited it like passively, but I also participated uh, in solving a business case. I pitched it in front of uh, strategy partners, the employees who were right there, uh, and they invited me after the uh, workshop ended to the interviews. So that's how I ended up a, uh, as an intern in strategy partners. Business consulting. Jean Serge mentioned the uh, importance of student experiences in the university. But when talking about the experiences of uh, studying in the university, it's not only about what's happening within the campus, but also what's happening around it. And one of the very uh, important things that starts in the beginning of your day is how you get in the campus and at the end of the day how you get out of there. And uh, due to our very good advantage that the uh, campus of Faculty of Business Management is located in the very center of the city, it's really easy to get there from any part of Moscow. And uh, it's actually only a three minutes walk from the metro station. Uh, our colleague Alona will guide you uh, just to see around how comfortable and how good it is in the surroundings around the campus. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Zelina and today I'm going to do the walk tour around the area where your campus of the Faculty of Business and Management of the Higher School of Economics is located. So let's get started. Um, opposite from me you can see that there is the metro station. Uh, the metro station is called Shabolska and this is the orange line. Uh, and when you exit the metro you arrive at Shabolska Street. This is one of the most historical uh, and very close to the center streets of Moscow. Um, there is also a lot of interesting and historical buildings in here. For example, one of them, when you exit the metro, you can see that on the right side there is a tower. Um, weirdly shaped tower. Um, uh, so this is called the Shukhov Tower and it was built in 1922 um, by the order of the Soviet authorities and um, the engineer was Vladimir Shukhov. Uh, so basically, uh, the way it was constructed, um, um, the one part was assembled inside of the previous one, and that's why this is a hyperboloid shape. Um, and uh, when they were designing this project, uh, the proposed height was about 350 meters, and the weight was around 2,200 tons. So the Eventually, it was decided to reduce the height and weight, and then the project was personally approved by Lenin. And the whole idea um, was to use it as the radio tower and to broadcast an idea of uh, the new state to the whole world. Um, as you can see, this neighborhood as of today is very green, contemporary, um, there is really nice infrastructure, there are tram tracks that go throughout the city, there are different um, coffee shops in here, but that wasn't like that um, in the past. So the history starts from the 17th century, where all the houses were wooden, and there were around maybe 37 courtyards in total. Um, and by 19th century, uh, this uh, wooden houses were replaced by stone structures and then by 1930s um, the residential apartment buildings were built. So another thing that I wanted to tell you is as you are walking with me you can see that um, this is a really easy and nice three-minute walk from the metro to the campus and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you what it looks like um, in a very close proximity from Shabalovsky metro station. Um, so, we almost arrived and this is how your future campus looks like. Um, there are around nine buildings in total, but don't worry because um, it, it is very easy to navigate inside and our team will always help you to find your way. Um, so, in the past, there also used to be a communal house nearby. And in this house, uh, the idea was so revolutionary uh, to build something that, uh, that could space 2,000 students together. Um, and that was the project which also had an effect on the contemporary design of buildings and uh, infrastructure in this neighborhood. Um, so it was decided to make three blocks. One block was for the sleeping area, the second block was for the washing area, and the third block was um, some kind of a day block where students had the dining room, they had a library, they had an area where they could um, uh, study by themselves uh, when they didn't have to go to the lectures. Um, unfortunately, this building is destroyed uh, and it were, they were trying to reconstruct it, but it is still um, one of the places which has an impact on the history of this neighborhood. And we're almost finished. And now I'm going to show you the main entrance of the Higher School of Economics. So this is the front door and this is the place 
where you're going to enter in September and hopefully you're gonna have an amazing experience here and find a lot of new friends and that's where I'm going to stop for now. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in September. And now that we've showed you in and around, let's move to the most important part of our uh, streaming session uh, that will tell you about the programs, the bachelor master programs that we offer you today. And the first master program that we'll be presenting to you today is actually very um, going along with the international uh, environment and the spirit that we're trying to share with you today with this uh, streaming session. This is a master program in international management. Uh, Anna, what do you think is the main value that your program gives to prospective students considering what we've gone through already in 2020? Well, Dmitry, first of all, uh, I have to tell you that this program is the latest addition to our portfolio of programs and it reflects the very spirit of the new business school. It's global and it builds on very strong relations with the leading global business schools. When we designed this program, we hoped that our future graduates will form a league of professionals capable to design and execute strategies for companies working in international markets and driven by global digital economy. But first things first, Let me guide you through the presentation of Master in International Management program. A brief outline. I'm going to show you seven slides and provide you with some information in these slides. We will start with key facts and features of the program. Well, very basic. It's a two-year, 120 ECTS credit, full-time, delivered in English, with a study abroad semester, mandatory for all students, and with some scholarships and grants from the university. We designed this program based on the world's best practices in business education. Being a student in this program, you will also have to read the books. A very strong academic foundation is a requirement. But we all know that, especially in business and management education, reading the books is not enough. You have to practice your new skills. And we created a truly collaborative environment for you to practice the skills and to make sure that all the knowledge you get in the program is grounded. You'll have lots of opportunities to develop your personal and professional skills, including two essential skills for future business leaders, leadership skills and teamwork. Another feature of the program is the very strong link with the corporate world. Consultancy projects, master classes, corporate internships and opportunities to engage in extracurricular activities and initiate projects at the business school and university levels are all awaiting for you. Who are our future students and what is our value offer? If you have a bachelor degree or an equivalent from a Russian or foreign university, you are eligible for this program. We do not require any professional experience, but you're expected to show to us that you possess an achievement motivation and you have good communication and leadership skills. Your motivation and your ambition to develop skills and competences essential for a successful international career are very important for us. What's our value proposition? What do we offer? We expect that by the end of the program, you will develop a full and comprehensive understanding of a global business environment and challenges of a digital world. You will develop a general and specialized management skills. You will have a practical experience of working on real life business projects. You will have an international experience. You will have a lot of opportunities to develop your career. And last but not least, networking, networking, networking. You will have a chance to network with our and university alumni, with corporate and academic partners. A few words about curriculum design and structure. On the left side, you'll see a list of core subjects, nothing new, the most essential stuff in the area of business and management education. On the right side are listed some of the elective courses you will be able to take while at the program. As I already said, this program is based on lots of practice-based activities. 
And to support this, we develop lots of research seminars and opportunities to do projects. Research seminars uh, will be offered in the most topical issues, such as design thinking, organizational development, sustainability aspects in international management. Consultancy projects, there will be two in year one and year two. In between of uh, year one and two, you will have an opportunity to take a corporate internships with one of our partners. And the program ends with master thesis. Let me tell you a few words about teaching team. In the program, you'll meet with three types of faculty. Core faculty of the business school and university. The core faculty usually have a very extensive academic and corporate international experience, and they'll be happy to convey it to you and to share it with you. You'll meet with visiting international faculty, and you will also meet with business executives who would come and share with you their practical experience. All our professors are committed to quality education and they are advocates of comprehensive education and eager to help you to develop your personal and managerial skills and get ready for a successful international career. Here I would like to point your attention that the program is delivered in full-time mode. It means that you will not have a chance to combine it with work or other activities. You're expected to invest 100% of your time into this program. And that creates a unique opportunity for you to regularly work and interact with your professors, to receive their support and guidance and feedback, and to network in the professional environment. That leads me to career perspectives. On the right, you see logos of some of the corporate partners of the program. They will be involved into different types of activities. I already mentioned two consulting projects that are sponsored by programs corporate partners and that will be delivered in year one and two. There is summer internship for those who are willing to take it. There will be master classes and workshops from C-level guest speakers. There will be lots of opportunities to become teaching and research assistants for HEC and business school professors. And you will also have a chance to participate in university-funded project groups. HEC University is well known in Russia and abroad for its very advanced and innovative approach to education. And this year, we launched a new initiative from this this year, any student of the university can apply for, initiate, get money and implement a group project. We'll tell you more about it when you become the students. A career development center at the business school will also provide you with lots of expected services, professional networking, career mobility opportunities, career events, master classes, and counseling on career, how to write a resume, and how to get your way into job market. We've got many international academic partners. It wouldn't be possible even to list all of them on one slide. Here on the slide, you see a link to our website. I strongly advise you to go and check it. You'll see all our academic partners, about 100 of them. Here on the slide, I decided to feature just four of them, including two that offer opportunities for double degree, Lancaster University and OCP Europe. Last but not least, and maybe the most important question for many of you, admission requirements and dates. Requirements are very straightforward. You have to hold a bachelor degree or an equivalent and be proficient in English. A bachelor degree is essential because master program is a graduate program, so you will have to have some prior education, proven education, before submitting to this program. The admission is based on portfolio review and entrance examination, if needed. There are two tracks. The international track is ongoing right now. It began in November last year. And within this track, we offer 15 places available for foreign nationals only. The general track available for both Russian and foreign nationals will open soon, in three weeks, on 22nd of June, and will offer 37 places, including 22 government-sponsored places. Government-sponsored places will be available for Russian nationals only. 
let me say a few words about portfolio and its composition. On the left, you see the structure of the portfolio, diploma and transcripts, documents that confirm your individual educational achievements, including recommendation letters, awards, certificates, scholarships, anything you can show to us to prove that you have some extra educational achievements besides your diploma. It would be great if you could confirm your international experience. If you have studied abroad, if you have met exchanges programs, if you did some internships in multinational companies or international companies, that will count as an extra benefit. We also expect you to submit a letter of motivation in English an essay on a given topic, the topic is in international management, and you're supposed to do the interview with us in English. We usually interview candidates with a team or three or four professors of HEC University, and its weight is quite heavy. It's 30 scores out of 100. And last but not least, you can get extra 10 scores if you submit your GMAT or GMAT-based test results. Altogether, the maximum score you can get is 100. And for those of you who are interested in financial scholarships and grants, their distribution is based on the score you get as a result of your portfolio review. The higher the score, the bigger is the scholarship or a grant you can apply and receive. Finally, our contacts. This presentation will be uploaded on our website, so you can go to it and check it anytime at your convenience. So, if you share a global aspiration, as we do here at the Business School, and if you have an interest in international career, you are welcome to join this master program. I see that there is lots of questions about the admission and about the portfolio. We will get to these questions a little bit later when we are done with the presentations of other two programs. You already met two of our professors. But to give you an idea of what you might experience here besides the academic curriculum, I would like to introduce to you a very special person. I think he is the most creative and the most innovative professor. Sergei Filanovich, a leading Russian expert in the areas of leadership, governance and organizational behavior, and let's look into his very unusual way to teach emotional intelligence. And let's listen to his opinion about a degree in international management. I'm very glad to greet everybody who expressed interest in our master program in international business. Uh, as I have a great uh, international experience, because uh, since 1989, for 17 years, I was a leader of a big program in high school students exchange. And uh, I was an international trustee of the largest organization in the world that uh, is doing the international exchange for high school students. And through that, I visited many countries. Now I have been to 65 countries in my life. And um, due to this experience, I am absolutely convinced that if you are interested in international business, you must come to study to another country, which is different from the country when you were born or where you are living now. Because uh, staying in your country, you even can't uh, distinguish your own culture. For instance, I remember my cultural shock when I came first time to the United States. It was my first uh, big uh, country that I visited. And coming there, I understood how different is Russian culture from uh, American culture. Uh, so. If you want to study international business, please come to Russia. And why Russia? There are many countries, and many countries are doing international business. But first of all, Russia is a very interesting country. Uh, its culture is very different from 
many cultures of Western Europe, from Japan, from un the United States. And also, which is very interesting about Russian culture, it is very diverse. Our country is very big. And if you will study here for two years, probably you will have an opportunity to travel through our country and you will see how diverse is this country. So Russia provides a great opportunity to travel and to see uh, a great variety of climate, nature, uh, national cultures, and so on. Also, uh, Russian language is uh, not so spread over the world uh, as, for instance, English, but still it is a language that many people speak. And although this program will be run in English, uh, nevertheless, staying for, for a while in our country, you will probably get the idea about Russian language that you will be able to use uh, in your professional experience um, for, for a long period of time. And that will provide you with a very important competitive advantage uh, professionally. So uh, there are a lot of reasons to come to this program. And uh, you are mostly welcome to do that. So. We are waiting for you this fall. Major uh, advantage of the, I must say, Russian mindset is its flexibility. Uh, we are not uh, that uh, strict and direct as, for instance, Anglo-Saxon uh, Saxon, uh, way of thinking. So we, are ma we managed to uh, escape uh, problems and resolve issues in a very difficult situations. And we have an experience living in, in the Soviet times and then going through this dramatic change that happened in the 19th at the beginning of the, of the 21st century. So we have this experience how to change ourselves and how to build businesses in this fast changing world. So I think that uh, Russian business, uh, to some extent, is more flexible than businesses in many other countries. Uh, then uh, I think uh, Russian people are very friendly, and uh, our business is uh, very often built uh, on the personal relations between people. And in some cultures, uh, People consider it as a probably uh, a shortcoming, as a, a problem. But I think that uh, we are at that extent closer to the Asian cultures where the uh, personal relations and uh, interaction and communication between people uh, are the basis of uh, any business. And so coming here and staying for, for a while, you uh, will develop this uh, personal uh, competency, how to uh, establish effective relation uh, with people uh, of other culture. And I think this is also a great competitive advantage. Students who come to our programs have that opportunity to take part not only in uh, the um, seminars or courses uh, uh, which are the part of the curricula of, for instance, this program in international business, but also they can uh, attend and take part in the great variety of uh, interesting uh, events relating to other disciplines and other fields of knowledge. And in this fast changing world where we are living now, that is very important because it's widening our horizon and it prevents us from the intellectual mere peer uh, that you can develop if you go very deep in your personal or in your own uh, subject or discipline and don't pay attention to other ones. That's what I like about higher school of economics. I think I'm really happy to have colleagues like Sergei Filanovich and the whole team that we work with is really fantastic and really great. And I think that the presentation that you just saw is very 
helpful to majority of you. There, there was a question already in the um, in the chat, and we'll address that later on today about why should we go to the Russian school on the English speaking programs. But I think that Professor Filanovich have addressed that in many ways in talking about emotional intelligence and the way how you start that global perspective and global view. We'll talk about that later on. But now I think it's really important that we move on and our next master program that we want to present you today is Master in Big Data Systems. This program is part of top 50 in the QS World University rankings and it's in the field of business analytics. The program is very unique because it's preparing th these kind of rare kind, still rare kind of specialists that are able to assess and use uh, technologies uh, that are using big data to generate profit for the companies. You should understand that it's a very complicated question because nowadays we're generating petabytes of information. So how you use that information, how you manage with the costs that is generated due to storing and transferring it, yes, and how you get profit from there. It's a complicated issue. And for the specialists that know how to use that, that are capable of managing these technologies, managing these uh, information technologies, there is a huge demand on the market. And I think that the truth is, it was as relevant before the COVID hurt us. And it will definitely be as relevant and as important for the market uh, in future, because the digital economy is now and digital economy is here. So let's listen. Yeah. But first, let me jump in for a second okay. uh, into my area, uh, international relations, because I want to highlight that this specific program cooperates with three European universities, University of Nassau, University of Munster and Technicum Vienna. And uh, its students have a chance to get a dual degree in business analytics uh, from one of these uh, universities. The academic director of the program, Vasily Karnilov, will present his program now. And he will be followed by the students of the program and by one of the corporate partners, SAP Company. SAP University Alliance's program manager for Russia and CIS region will tell you about unique opportunities that the company offers our students. Hello, my name is Vasily Karnilov. I welcome you and invite you to join the presentation of the master's program Big Data Systems. If you are thinking about where to go to study to get an interesting, promising and highly paid profession, then the answer is Master of Business Informatics. And the best way to get this degree is our master's program. Some facts about our program. Duration – 2 years full-time. Language of instruction – only English. Class meet on weekday evenings and on Saturdays. Who are the program's future students? The specifics of, of the program require some special skills from our future students. We are happy to welcome applicants with a basic education in information technology, management and economics. Project and practical experience in IT field is also welcome. What do we offer? Our graduates will have a unique set of competences in data and knowledge management, information system and technology management, as well as good knowledge and business analytics and data science. A few words about the program structure. Our students take advantage of a wide variety of core and elective courses to customize their education. Core courses form the foundations of skills and knowledge in the key areas of data analysis, economics, and mathematic modeling, management, system analysis, and organization design. Core courses are obligatory and students take the core courses in the first year of study. Elective courses allow students to customize their education to suit their own interests and career goals. Students take a total of seven elective courses, four in the first year of study and three in the second year of study. Through elective courses, students build the unique expertise and marketable skills in the areas of their choice. 
for students uh, who do not have sufficient experience in data analysis and management, the program offers adaptive courses aimed at creating a solid base for further in-depth study of specific courses. The purpose of the research seminars is to develop academic competencies in the field of analysis and evaluation of the impact of new information technologies, including big data and related technologies on the efficiency and architecture of business. Throughout a two-year comprehensive course, students gradually learn how to search for, process and analyze data, conduct research for and write academic papers, and present research outcomes. The course also includes thematic guest lectures and master classes from leading specialists of the program's partner companies. The program offers lots of opportunities to interact and network with the leading international and Russian companies, such as SAP, Microsoft, Kroc, Force, Lanit, and many others. We offer our students participations in career events, master classes, workshops and seminars with the best employers counseling students on how to build a career, writing a resume and job market navigation. About academic mobility. There are double degree cooperation agreements for students of the master's program Big Data Systems between our university and partner universities. These are University of Munster, Germany, University of Passau, Germany, and University of Applied Sciences, Technikum Wien, Austria. Applicants must have a bachelor's degree on its equivalent and hold proof of English proficiency. Applicants are considered for admission based on the application portfolio. The candidates should provide the following documents. Letter of motivation, describing the reason for applying to our program in the context of your long-term career goals and background. Scans of diploma and official academic transcript. Proof of the project and practical experience and IT field. Resume or CV, including information about your education, professional and research experience, language knowledge, and any other skills. English proficiency test score report. Welcome to the master's program Big Data Systems. See you in class. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikita Golsov and I'm a student at Big Data Systems Master Program at Higher School of Economics. As we all can see, the world around us is changing rapidly. Optimization and automation of processes cover more and more new areas of activities. Initially aimed at automating manual physical labor, for example industrial robots for performing heavy operations and plants, nowadays software can handle more complex and sophisticated tasks, which seem to be intellectual and thus requires human inter intervention. Every day we observe how technology emerges as a bigger and bigger sphere. Embracing new areas, we can already clearly see its significant role in such cases as to help doctors to identify diseases and make uh, diagnoses, prevent bank card frauds, identify criminals, and so on. Maintaining and processing an enormous number of transactions every day after day, the next question arises. How to concisely store all of this data? How to process it efficiently? How to keep it safe? Making a step further, one might also wonder what are the new horizons to use this data and how to use it for better purposes? Could we better understand people's habits and their behavior? Is it possible to provide more pleasurable and satisfying services? Eliminate exhausting human labor? All of these questions is where big data comes. Each of us has a unique way of thinking and thanks to that a proper usage of big data let you answer all of these questions and give you a chance to make your individual solutions become true. Let's move on to the real example. Besides studying, I'm currently a part of Tax Digital Solutions team in a big four consulting company. When I just started working there, I was really amazed at how digitalized Russian tax authorities are. As you could hear, Russian Federal Tax Service was recognized as one of the most digital in the world. And I think that is well-deserved recognition, because there are a lot of great solutions they did. Countless number of remote services, online cash desk, 
services for safe business, even the usage of artificial intelligence for automated detection of tax evasion. All this has been built and is working now because there are a lot of data and what's more important, the authorities are managing to process and extract value from it. Looking at how the situation with information technologies is evolving, some people might be afraid of robots and systems to replace humans in many positions. That might cause a number of economic and social problems. But I personally believe that there won't be any great negative consequences, even though we need to be wise and decent building up new solutions. The world already has an urgent need for people who can design information systems, develop and implement software solutions, as well as the people who will test and look after such systems and correct their mistakes. Studying at the Big Data Systems program, I can say that I feel in touch with the most high-end technologies, and I am sure that my education will help me to feel confident in the world of future. Greetings from Moscow. My name is Yuri Kobryanov, and I'm SAP Universal Alliance's country manager. So basically, uh, I am managing the academic relations of SAP company, which is leading vendor of uh, carbon software, and which is quite well present on uh, the market in Russia and SAS. Uh, in my day-to-day -day, um, job duties, I do work with the universities, and I do encounter quite a bit the graduates, the students, and of course the faculty members of uh, big data management systems or master programs of high school or economics. What I have to say, uh, this is one of the most industry and uh, like real life oriented master programs uh, I have a chance to work with. It's a great pleasure that uh, I have a chance to support them in numerous ways, like having our experts deliver uh, workshops and uh, for the students. Uh, having the students attending our office for different uh, excursions, getting to know how actually the businesses like SAP work. And uh, I hope uh, we will uh, in the future only uh, uh, intensify our cooperation and have SAP software uh, implemented into the educational process and uh, having more students join SAP globally as interns and as uh, future specialists of our companies. I hope you have today a very uh, interesting and uh, very uh, positive experience of learning within this virtual uh, open doors day uh, about the HSE, about the master programs. You will be able to take uh, the proper informed decisions whether to join uh, the program or how you will be partnering with the program. And I hope you do have uh, something interesting and learn something positive for yourself. So stay healthy, stay safe in these days and hope one day we'll see each other in person once you join the program. Greetings from Moscow, bye. Big data fuels the most important decisions in marketing. Our next speaker today will be Maria Pavlicheva, Head of Marketing Communication at the school. Maria has a vast executive experience in top international advertising and communication agencies. She'll talk about why choosing a right business school can be a crucial decision in your professional career. Dear prospective students, my name is Maria Pavlicheva, and I am the head of Marco at the Faculty of Business and Management and the Future Graduate School of Business at HSC University in Moscow. I suppose that getting a degree from our faculty can be a really great step towards a successful international career. When I was a student, I did a part of my course in a foreign university, and it gave me a completely different perspective. Being exposed to new teaching and seminar methods, deep diving into foreign culture, and being surrounded by a new group of friends opened up my horizons. Later, when I started my professional life and became a member of an international team, I actually realized the value of that experience. It helped me a lot to really thrive 
and become a successful member and the leader of an international team. Because I already had the experience of being exposed to the diversity of mindsets and opinions. And we all know that diversity actually drives our creativity and helps a lot with our leadership skills. It also develops our emotional intelligence, which is completely vital for any business leader or any business team leader. So good luck with your applications. And we all hope to see you soon at the Faculty of Business and Management and the Graduate School of Business of Higher School of Economics in Moscow. The next program that we want to offer you today is the Bachelor Program. And the advantage of it is that it offers young people a fantastic shortcut to become a um, specialist on the international market just right from the start. Because it's a program that offers a parallel or a dual degree uh, program organized by HSE University and University of London. Uh, the combination of fundamental disciplines in business informatics and specialized courses in management and digital innovation offers a very unique and very relevant uh, set of uh, skills and knowledge for the professional of the 21st century. The graduates of the program get a degree uh, from uh, HSE uh, in um, Bachelor of Sciences and Business Informatics and a Bachelor of Sciences in Management and Digital Innovation in the University of London. We live in a world of alliances and cooperation, and the greatest advantage of this specific program is the opportunity to benefit from the professors and ecosystems of two great universities. I see that there are some questions about this particular program in our chat and Sergei Yefremov, the Academic Director of the Management and Digital Innovation Program, will present it now and in his presentation he will address some of the questions. Hello, my name is Sergei Yefremov. I'm the Academic Director of the BSc Management and Digital Innovation, a parallel degree program implemented jointly by the High School of Economics and the University of London under, under the academic direction of London School of Economics and Political Science, LSE. In this presentation, I will outline the program's key distinctive features, show its current curriculum and structure. You will also learn about the rich ecosystem of our graduate business school's corporate partners and how it is helping students and program graduates to pursue a successful career. At the end, I will talk about this year's admission requirements. Uh, MDI is a full-time four-year educational program taught entirely in English. At the end of four years of study, our graduates receive two independent diplomas, a Russian bachelor's degree in business informatics and a University of London diploma in management and digital innovation. Our program rests on three pillars. On the one hand, for the last 15 years, our graduate business school has successfully trained graduates in the field of business informatics, which is a multidisciplinary area of study joining key elements of economics, IT and management. These graduates are among the most sought after and highly paid in Russia and across the globe. Secondly, it is the partnership of our university and the London School of Economics with respect to parallel degree programs. This enabled us to successfully combine two very different approaches to education, Russian and British, different study schedules and curricula. And finally, this is the degree of the London School of Economics in Management and Digital Innovation, which provides an insight into the cutting edge approaches to, uh, to digital innovation and transformation in business. We think that this combination creates a unique educational product to which there is no direct alternative. We are expecting graduates from Russian and foreign high schools with solid results in mathematics. Candidates are also assumed to have a strong knowledge of the English language, both spoken and written. The new academic year will begin on the 1st of September 2020, and from the very first day, everything related to the, to the, to the study process will be carried out in English. Even though business informatics is a multidisciplinary area, there are no prerequisites in either economics or informatics. Students will attend regular classes on the HSC campus on Chablovka Street, one of the central locations in Moscow. This will be complemented by online access to e-learning materials through a specialized learning management systems. Along with development of general and specialized management skills, students from the very first year will participate in project-oriented work, which will be connected with adoption of innovative information technologies and companies. Let us consider in more detail the structure of the parallel degree program. The British LSE part consists of 12 complex courses taught from second to fourth year. An external exam is taken for each such uh, discipline at the Certified Examination Centre. Students' works are assessed by LSE professors. 
And in addition to this, students undergo training with learning informatics with a significant practical component, uh, participate in project work, and at the end of the fourth year, they defend their BSc thesis. The first year of the program is preparatory. It doesn't count towards the University of London degree, and it includes fundamental training in higher mathematics, IT programming, economics, and a number of subjects of the general cycle required for the Russian degree. Students continue to study English language in a large amount, so that at the end of their first year, they can earn required scores at the house examination to be admitted to the LSE. The program has a strong uh, and balanced teaching staff, which includes uh, both representatives of the academic and the business community. All teachers undergo annual assessment according to a set of criteria. First of all, experience in their professional field, the results of student assessment of the previous teaching period, and their skills in English. MDI is a program with an obvious applied focus. Starting next year, our third year students will go through uh, their first corporate internships at our business school's partner companies. Throughout the educational process, students are invited to participate in a number of projects, of which I will single out an international student project with Rotterdam University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. During four months uh, of this project, students participate in the development of simple information systems. They negotiate formalized requirements and present their final solutions. The range of future jobs for our program graduates is a really broad one. A career of our typical graduate starts from such basic professions as business analyst or IT consultant. The subject area of business informatics is favorably distinguished by very rapid career growth. After three to five years of work, there is a transition to such positions as a system architect, IT or digital project manager. In a perspective of seven to ten years after graduation in small and medium-sized companies, professionals can already apply for the positions of technical directors or CDOs. It has to be mentioned that some of our graduates prefer to start their own businesses. The British BSc degree is awarded by the University of London. Currently, the global community of registered students studying at the international programs of UOL accumulates to over 50,000 students in more than 180 countries. LSE, which is one of the UOL colleges, is currently ranked 10th in the world in the field of business and management. It provides academic direction for the program. LSE academics prepare all the learning materials for the courses, including comprehensive study guides, additional electronic resources, and they check examination papers of students. We we'll have two separate entry tracks. One is reserved exclusively for applicants who are foreign nationals. They have to pass just two entrance exams, mathematics and the English language. Russian citizens are admitted based on their results of the Russian state examination or high school Olympiads. In both of these cases, the initial application process starts online. Our program sets the minimum required scores for each exam. You will not be able to apply for the program unless you pass the threshold in each required subject. The dates you see on the slide are preliminary. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, they may be changed. You can always find the latest information on our website. Thank you for your attention. You can always contact me or the program manager if you have any further questions related to the program content or to the admission process. I hope to see you as our students in September. Hi, everyone. I'm the first year student of Management and Digital Innovation program. And I should say that this program is absolutely new experience of studying. We're doing a lot of practice, like business plans, researches, and computer programming also. I really encourage you to enter this program. Let's build friendly and creative community together. Having presented three programs, uh, all things considered, what we basically are offering to you is a fantastic opportunity to jumpstart your global co career in one of the three business management areas with a very high demand on the market. And all of our students benefit from great school ecosystem with uh, career guidance and every program that we talk to the, uh, offers great options for international mobility and even dual degree possibilities. When making your decisions, the, the number of reasons, these advantages that I've just talked about, you can definitely put in a list that will mm, uh, qualify and that will um, make a reason why you should choose our Faculty of Business and Management and HEC University. The value of your future degree and your employability, your career, are two very important considerations. And we here work very high, work very hard to make sure that it stays high. But what's also important for the next two or four years of your life is the experience that you get in addition to your studies.
And based on my own experience, I can tell you that that's definitely something that you don't want to miss. Let's look at the real life experience that our students have during their studies in Moscow. Bright colors, great places, friends and parties, sunny days ahead in Moscow. It's all been an important entourage of student life. But what really matters is what you do for the community and for the people around you. Let me give you just one example. Sangam Kumar Singh is our student studying in the program of Big Data System. He joined the Older Generation Support Center opened at HEC University during the COVID-19 pandemic and as a volunteer helped seniors to cope with stress, loneliness and anxiety. Another student, Paula, says that she became much more self-aware of sustainability issues with courses she took at HEC University. Let's listen to her. Hello and lots of greetings from Moscow Red Square. My name is Paula and I'm a student from the Corporate Social Responsibility class from Yekaterina Ivanovna. And I have to say this course was really one of my favorites during my studies. Not only because you had lots of fun and I learned a lot, but because it had a really huge impact on my daily life and on my behavior. And I already started to convince other people that they became aware as well and start a sustainable life and I will definitely continue doing so and telling to my family members and all people who are surrounding me and my biggest wish is to become a role model so other people will look at me and they will also try to become aware and start to care about our planet. Student experience in HSC is not only about studies, but it's also about networking, career um, events and student uh, unions and student activities, all of the things that are going outside of the classrooms. And uh, one of our graduates, uh, who we already invited to share his experiences, Alexander Nikolaev, will share his view on the value of those student activities that are present in HEC and in Faculty of Business and Management, and he will also tell you how valuable they are for your future career and for your life. First, uh, of course, higher school of economics is the studies. So studies are in the middle, but around it, of course, there is a huge part of student unions, student union actually, uh, which provide you various number of activities, starting from the art exhibitions, finishing uh, with uh, uh, scientific events or business events. So you are not only studying from nine till four in the university. No, you live inside the university because the university provides you kind of family. They, like, they get you inside and you become a part of a big HSC family. You and all the events, everything is always open for you. It's always interesting to participate. And of course, if you don't speak Russian, those events are going to be like, you can choose events which uh, are conducted in English. So it's going to be easier to understand and easier to understand the Russian culture. Most of the uh, alumni of High School of Economics uh, becoming big managers in international companies in Russia and the, around the globe or the go like or after graduating 
of, from higher school of economics, they start a business which grows quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. So when we, the people whom we are talking with, whom we are studying with in the HSE, it's always going to be uh, interesting. Like it's, they're always going to be interesting uh, acquaintance. Moreover, later, like uh, later after you graduate, you understand that actually the network you built in the university now is super strong as you will have acquaintances from different industries, completely different industries. And the people managing, like being the head of finance, head of marketing, or uh, people who founded the big startups and uh, stay in Russia or uh, move around the globe. The last few months were very challenging for all of us. Businesses, universities, schools around the world had to go online. We at the Higher School of Economics were always on the digital front end. And the transition to remote learning and teaching was not a big shock for us. We did it in a week, literally, and nothing really stalled. And even more, for some brave and innovative people, the crisis created new possibilities. Let's look at HSC students who came up with a very innovative idea in this period of time. They reconstructed HSC campuses in Minecraft and used this virtual space to organize different events and to meet up with the friends. However, the truth is that it's even a bigger challenges, a bigger challenge for all students who come from very far away to study and those who chose an international path. And uh, the challenge that you find when you have to study and you're far away and you're isolated, it's a big question. So how to survive that? How to cope with that? How to go on and be st stay still focused and, you know, live a life? It's a big question. Uh, two of our students, uh, Roxana Ramirez and Anton Beguer, will share some of their ideas on how to do that and how to survive, adapt and live, basically live, through the isolation, uh, specifically if you came from very far away. I have classes from Monday to Thursday in the morning. After that I have lunch, I rest, I go out for a walk. We have here in the dorm a little garden. Well, it's not so little, it's not so big, but it's really nice if you need some fresh air. After that, I do my homework, I do some exercise, and finally, go to sleep. Weekends are where I have the most time to do homework and study. However, these days go really fast. Because between I want to do my homework and I want to rest, and while I want to watch some movies, they disappear. <laughs> Due to this emergency situation, we all have to adapt to online learning and it is a new method uh, that I am getting used to. I put my best effort into learning as much as possible. What I miss most about university are classes. Uh, being with my classmates, talking to them, interacting with teachers, having fun learning. The way I deal with this is by enjoying every second of the class. I try to interact, uh, to I try to talk to my classmates as much as possible with the teachers, um, everything to not, not feel bored and just to enjoy the class. Hey, I'm Anton. I'm a master's student at the HSE Faculty for Business Informatics and Management. Um, I'm part of the Big Data Systems program um, in partnership with University Passau uh, in Germany. Um, and I'm currently writing my master thesis uh, on the topic of community embeddings um, remotely, but with the HSE. Um, and my study day uh, starts quite well. So I set up a morning routine, I'm working remotely 
um, I start with like a short exercise and affirmations, then um, short meditation, and then some Russian language learning um, remotely uh, to get started into my day quickly. I um, also like to have a coffee in the morning, so that works out quite well, even remotely. Um, and then I organize my studies by uh, working from my laptop at a designated space. So I have like the same space where I work um, every day. And I think that's a great mechanism for keeping yourself focused and staying on task. If you know I'm here now, I'm going to work on my master thesis. This is what I'm going to do. Um, and I would I would say like I, I online studying um, might not be easier or more difficult. It's just different. Um, some things are better, some are worse. So one thing that's good is that if you have lecture videos or something like that, you can always scroll back or forward. Um, then, uh, of course, you're not there in person. So asking questions could uh, include a delay or something. But I think um, HSE has set it up quite well. So we have with the one module that I'm still taking, um, next, writing my master thesis, uh, we have a Microsoft Teams channel, and um, the professor is is uh, very responsive to emails. Um, and as part of this course, we're also doing a uh, Coursera course, which um, works very well, I think. Um, so I'm I'm very satisfied with studying remotely. Um, and then, so come up, did I come up with any life hacks? Uh, spend time productively. So the first one, which I think is extremely important, is the the morning routine um, to get yourself in the in the mindset of working. Um, another one is like having weekly to do lists. So saying this week, um, I want to have this as part of my master thesis done, and then I'm going to submit that to my supervisor um, and to other people to give me feedback. So I think you have to uh, have some sense of planning. Um, integrated uh, into your schedule and that will help a lot so i miss most about university life would be like spending time with my uh, colleagues and other students like meeting up for coffee uh, meeting up for for just like a chat at a coffee place uh, i think the social aspect is extremely important when studying um because you can exchange ideas um spend time together this of course is uh, is not possible remotely, or at least not to the same extent. Um, but we'll see how it, how it develops further. For all of you who haven't been to Russia yet, you'll find that the, one of the most common and interesting features of Russian is an optimism. We are very optimistic people here. And even though they say that we don't smile a lot, but we share a big part of optimistic attitude. And that's why we actually really believe that the, all of those issues with COVID and isolation, they're not here to stay. And we really hope, we believe that all of that will shift to a normal or maybe not normal, but a better way uh, of life as, it, as we move on. And we, all of our team that is uh, doing that, that is trying to make the best university, the best business school, will try to input our share in that. Uh, well, let's listen to Carlos. Uh, he is one of the students who uh, saw what it means to, to be an international student and to study and live in Moscow. In Russia, there is a mysterious university with a name like an automobile, an alcoholic beverage, and five universities in other countries. But for me, HSC is the one and only. You want to know how I came up with it? No, it's not me. Here I am. My name is Carlos, and I've been studying at HSC for two years. This place is nothing like I expected. And I'll tell you what I love about it. HSC is much younger than the Sorbonne or Oxford, but it has a lot to offer. Yet, I still was afraid I would meet a bear at any moment, get hit by a troika or fees. But nothing of the sort happened. I learned a lot of new things though. I learned that in Russia science does not revolve only around hacking and space. At HSC alone, they teach almost any subject.
Whatever you choose at this university, you'll find everything you need to fall in love with science. A wide range of tutorials, fascinating lectures, and online courses. All the necessary equipment and enthusiastic colleagues who are full of energy. I expected that it would be difficult to live with harsh Russians, but it turned out that they are like that only in the metro. In the dorm, I can always find a great group of people to cook pancakes, watch Red Heat and conduct experiments, scientific and otherwise. I love it, you see, because it is an awesome university in an awesome city. Moscow is amazing, and even in two years, I haven't seen a fraction of its interesting places. Every day the city is full of lights and events. Maybe one day I will finally meet the bear. 30,000 other students and I have discovered here the knowledge that the best employers are ready to fight for. Friends for life and precious memories. I wish you were here. Okay, so we have reached finally the Q&A sessions and I'm really happy to see such a big number of questions that you have for us. And so let's start to make it interesting. Um, yeah, let's begin with the question that I will address to Sergei Yefremov, uh, academic director of our bachelor program. The questions are about uh, EGE, about Entry costs, yes, yes. about personal achievements. I think Sergei will be able to address them. Well, good evening, everyone. So, thanks for this first question. There are a number of points raised in this question. I'll try in my answer to, to answer all of them. So, um, firstly, uh, it is about uh, the real points which are needed when entering the program. Now, this being uh, MDI, being a fully commercial program, does not really um, make it the kind of the full kind of uh, the full competition which is normally made for. Uh, the uh, the other Russian programs at HSC. So here it is the minimal scores that we require, uh, which are uh, 60 in the Russian language, uh, in mathematics, and 70 in the English language. So these three exams you have to take, uh, and you have to pass the threshold to be able to apply for this program. Um, so the cost for the program um, uh, might change. Uh, it will be mentioned in your contract. Uh, it, it normally does not change more than 4% per year. So it's kind of limited from the top. Uh, regarding personal achievements, uh, again, this being a commercial program, this, uh, these achievements do not count when you enter the program. So only the, your Russian state examination results do count. And the last point regarding this military training that you mentioned, again, as all HSC students, you will certainly be able to attend this. Yeah, and I have one more addition, Sergey, if I may, uh, that uh, there, there are at least two paths that you can choose when entering this program. You have mentioned that in your presentation already, and I'm just trying to pay attention of the students to that, right? So that there are at least two paths. You can uh, go through the admission for international students, which is a separate uh, uh, competition. And right now, there are only open for the commercial-based uh, admissions. And there is a, another competition uh, that is common for everyone, both for people in Russia and for abroad. And uh, there are different conditions. You can read all about that on the web page of HSC and just pay attention to that. So there, is, there are at least two opportunities that you can choose now. There were three if you choose for next year, because there are at least the international uh, championships that you can participate and use that. But right now there are two paths. Yes. Well, the next question is uh, about our plans for the next academic year and whether we are going to do it online or in class. Yeah. Dmitry, any opinion about it? Well, <laughs> to tell you the truth, with the COVID and isolation, we all became uh, the <laughs> in-house uh, data an uh, analytics. And we start our day basically with looking at the <laughs> graphs of data with the number of people who reported sick and with how many people uh, cured. And uh, the same goes for many decisions in all around the world. People are monitoring the actual state and are acting on that. In terms of business, actually, it's a very important uh, skill to act on data. 
So to, to be serious, uh, right now we're hoping, we're, we, we believe in that the isolation period will pass and probably in the spring we'll all have the possibility to uh, go offline to meet uh, face to face and a lot of students actually are now valuing that unique possibility that we have for people sitting next to each other and talking, you know, because that's something that you can still transfer by going digital. So hopefully by uh, September we'll start our uh, classes online. However, uh, the HSC University is ready for all kinds of uh, events and there were already uh, white talks in the university in case of different kinds of events. What if the some borders with some countries will be still closed? What if something will go not in the way how we expect it to be? So HSC University is ready for that and it's ready to offer also the online forms. So for us, online, offline, in any kind of way, we'll be able to provide you with the best uh, education that is possible on the market. But personally, I can't wait to get back on campus and to meet with the colleagues and with the students. Yeah, this, this event is actually a very great possibility for us just to be here and just to see the friendly faces of our colleagues. It's a fantastic opportunity, yes. The next question is about a Master in International Management. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know uh, who asked this question, and that's sort of important if it is a foreign national or a Russian national, because uh, for a Russian national, uh, you can either take a GMA test, official GMA test online. It's available now online. You have to uh, register and pick up the date and bring uh, us the score. Or if you are a Russian national, you can do a GMAT-based uh, test with us also online. So, two options for um, Russian. Yeah, for the for the main competition, uh, you have uh, the possibility first to go to the GMAC, for example, web page, right? The one yeah. that the organization that issues this GMAT certificates, right? And to search for the GMAT online uh, op offer that they have now in the COVID, right? Is, yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. And also there are dates, if that's the main wave of entry for, for admissions, there are dates that would be in August when there will be the exam that we do. It will be done online. All of the entry exams of HSC are done online. So yes, you can take that. The, um, there are also questions that partially uh, go along with uh, the, the rest of the questions in, with, with regards to the schedule, with regards to the time, right? Uh, last week, uh, the admissions uh, office uh, of HEC University have issued uh, and published online the dates, specific dates for the entry exams. And later on, we'll send you a link here in, in the WenSpeak platform that you can check out with the specific dates for English exams and the GMAT analog exam that we ha you have to take if you want to enter the Master of International Management course. So these dates are already there. So you have to just check that. So that's concerning the students that are going with the Russian part of the students. So the same competition, general that, the general yeah. track, yes. Yeah. For the international students, so it's an additional track, right? There are other dates, they, they are staying the same, nothing really changed there. And for uh, the Master of International Management program, there is a portfolio uh, consideration, right? So you can send that. It's, it's yes? the portfolio, yeah. yeah. And uh, the requirements uh, for the portfolio for its structure are published on our website. And we've been talking about it already. And the next question here is what exactly will the interview include? Interview uh, will be done with the uh, board, uh, with uh, two or three of our professors. And uh, we will uh, ask you about your motivation about your achievements, uh, about your aspirations. For us, it's important to see during the interview that you are mature enough to enter this program and that you match uh, our values and that you will be able to bring the extra value to your classmates. Do you have any privilege for the Olympiad winners in terms of admission? Yeah. Actually, all the information about the um, bonuses and the privileges for the winners of uh, different championships, in including international championships and the uh, championships of the Russian world, the Olympiads for, for, for that. You can also look at that. So just not to be, uh, you know, uh, just to look in detail. So which exactly Olympiad your past, which exactly championship you participate, what kind 
kind of advantage does it give you? Again, there is a specific link that you should check. You should rely on data and not on words. And we'll send you that link so that you just double check that. And uh, all the information is basically posted on HEC web page. But the short answer to this specific question, no. Uh, Master of Science in International Management, we don't accept the results of Olympiads. But other programs do. Yes, 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 exactly. So if they checked the web page, they would see that. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, some more questions about uh, Master in International Management. So about the essay, part of the portfolio, the text. Uh, yes, the references page is included in the number of uh, pages. Uh, recommendation letters, if I worked as a TA assistant, yes, uh, working as a TA assistant counts and you can provide the recommendation from your supervisor. Um, According to the requirements, the recommendation letters should be printed on an official paper with a stamp. Is no. Yes, no, yeah. so we, we don't need that. We, yeah, we, we, yeah. we, we are understand. flexible, we are flexible and it will be enough to, well, get some proof that this recommendation letter was actually written by a person. Yeah, and because, sent maybe by yeah. an email, yeah, because yeah. that's the world that we're living in. Okay, we have another question. I think it's a question to Sergei, Sergei Efremov. Yes, um, I hold diploma in commerce, which is not up to bachelor's degree from a university in Ghana. Uh, in fact, I need to do two years post-diploma to get a bachelor's degree. I would like to apply to the bachelor's program. Do I qualify for this program? Sergey, can you answer that question? Yeah, um, well, basically, um, you need to take this uh, foreign uh, applicant track uh, for that. So from what I saw in this message, you seem to be eligible to enter this program. Now, the best thing uh, I advise you to do is to really make an application online. There are no obligations on top of that and submit the documents you currently have. So they will be checked by our admission committee and uh, then they will give you sort of the immediate answer based on formal requirements. From what I can uh, see in your message, you're perfectly el el eligible to enter our program. The only thing um, uh, to uh, add to this is that is uh, this will still be a four year program. So we don't make it uh, like a two year, we, we won't be able to combine into two years for you. So you'll still need to pass all these four years of our BSc program. Okay, very good. I think another question is also going to you. Mm, Anna? Yes, yeah. it's again about... I, I can uh, read it if you want to. Uh, uh, how many points will be awarded for the Red Diploma in non-management major? Okay, what's important? We do not differentiate between management or non-management majors. You can apply with any diploma, uh, undergraduate diploma. If you didn't have any management or business background, you will have to get some adaptation courses when you are in the program. So we do not differentiate between management, not management. And yes, of course, if you have a red diploma or a diploma with distinction, of course, you will get some extra uh, points uh, when we evaluate your portfolio. And uh, in what language, Russian or English, recommendation letters, of course, in English. Okay. Um, then there is another question. I think that this question goes to Vasily. Uh, exactly. Vasily Karnilov. Vasily, you there? Um, so let me read you the question. Uh, if I won the Open Doors Olympiad, can I get a scholarship at HSE? Uh, what cloud technology, Azure or Amazon, um, do you teach the big data program with? Can I work part time during the two years of my program for some of your partners? How much is the cost? And can I study Russian language as part of my chosen program? So can you answer those five questions? Uh, yes. Uh, about Olympiads, uh, the all information is uh, in the site of HSE. Uh, I think uh, the right way uh, is uh, to see. Uh, uh, about uh, cloud technology, mm, I think the right answer uh, is uh, you will get learned with both of these technologies, but not at the highest level. Our course on cloud computing provides basic knowledge and does not give uh, the depth study of any uh, one platform. About part-time working, yes, of course, uh, you can... Uh, what else about cost of education? The basic cost of training without any discounts is 400,000 troubles a year. And what else? 
about Russian language. Yes, yes of course. Uh, during communication with those classmates uh, and as some additional active cases. Okay. Okay, there is a mm, little bit vague question, so we'll try to uh, make all the possible uh, conditions for it. So what is the deadline for applying for double degree? Well, for the bachelor program, that's basically you enter a double degree program, you finish, you graduate, the, the, you finish the first year and then you enter this, uh, the, this track that uh, Sergei told you about today. But about the um, uh, master program. So Anna, can you start maybe uh, t t talking about double degree possibilities in your program? So when uh, do the students can apply for that option, for du du dual degree? Usually by the end of the first semester with us. Okay. So that's, well, our students are socialized already, they better understand what to expect and what they want to achieve, uh, well, in the remaining time of the study program, but definitely not before the start of the program. Okay, Vasily, is it the same for your program? Yes, it's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, please describe the process of studying abroad, as you mentioned in the program agenda. If you get scholarship for studying, what does it cover and what doesn't? And I think it's the question right for you, right? So the possibilities for international mobility. Yeah, I think it's the question basically for everybody. Well, it's uh, really difficult to describe uh, the experience of studying uh, abroad because it's it's very vast. I would advise you to go and uh, check uh, on our website the page of the Center for International Mobility. We've got quite a lot of materials, uh, including the feedback uh, from the students who have been there uh, before. Basically, you've got a list of uh, about uh, 100 uh, business schools and uh, university you can choose from and um, you name your uh, priorities and then we work on uh, fitting uh, your requests into the uh, availability. Uh, the scholarships uh, vary. Uh, we try to offer the scholarship so that they offer at least the basic costs of uh, accommodations. Mm -hmm. But again, we have to take into account that we offer opportunities to go abroad in different regions, in different countries. The cost of living varies. So it will be our joint work to figure out where you would like to be and what support, including financial support, you will need to do so. But uh, just a small question for me. Uh, when I was a student, myself, master student, there was a connection between how well you studied and what kind of scholarships you could, you know, ask for. So is it the same? So your performance and the possibilities for scholarships? Well, performance uh, always matters. Mm -hmm. Performance uh, matters even uh, when we have to decide where to go because, uh, of course, the best students will go to the uh, best schools due to competition yeah due to okay. competition yeah, okay. based on competition yeah okay okay then moving on i think the next question is to uh, sergey right uh, good afternoon thank you for organizing this event thank you uh, thank you said uh, i completed my education in the uk how can i apply to hsc with a levels are there any different deadlines uh, well, again, it depends on the track you're eligible to take. Uh, now, uh, with the A-levels, uh, you uh, now, if you were a foreign citizen, uh, now you could certainly take this A-level results and apply as a, uh, as a foreign citizen to this uh, MDI program. And uh, you see from this year, does accept these documents, does accept these results. Now, uh, if you're a Russian citizen, uh, well, from what I know, this won't be possible. So you still have to take sort of the general track. Uh, for those uh, of our applicants who uh, did not take this unified Russian uh, state examination, then there is a chance to take the internal HSC exams and then apply for the program, provided you pass the, the thresholds uh, of um, in each required subject. Thank you, Sergei. And I think we should stay with you and also ask you the next question. Uh, it's uh, a question that probably uh, people from different background than business of informatics uh, can ask. Do I need any programming skills or knowledge of programming languages to apply for bachelor's program HSE, HSE and University of London parallel degree program in management and digital innovation? So do you need to? Uh, when somebody asks me about programming, I can talk for about an hour because that's the course which I've been teaching here for more than seven years. <laughs> now, 
Indeed, uh, programming is one of the core subjects we teach uh, in the first year of our program. In particular, it is based around the uh, very popular Python language nowadays, uh, which is uh, which is then used in the, in further courses on data analysis. But I will emphasize this once again. I already told it in my presentation. There are no prerequisites in informatics, including programming. National management and GMAT exams, but I think we I think already we, uh, yeah. Yeah, covered that. Yeah. Uh, next question. I have a question about the exclusive use of English as the teaching language. As far as I can see, most professors are Russian and presumably most of it are not native English speakers. So for a native English speaker, the professors will always be to some extent handicapped in their expression by comparison with a UK or US institution of equivalence teacher. If I want an English language course, why would I choose HEC over alternative in a native English country? And if I'm Russian with a fluent or native English, why would I choose uh, HEC English taught course over an equivalent course taught in Russian? Well, uh, I think it's a question to basically all of the speakers here today, but uh, if I can start uh, uh, answering that question, uh, we tried to focus the presentation of today and the very kind of materials that we said, the kind of information that we uh, put at you here, that the offer of HEC in these three programs, it's not just about uh, the, the courses, even though they're dealt in the very uh, highest possible level, but it's actually about the jump starting your career to global uh, area. And in this sense, it doesn't really matter where you start your um, global um, career if you're a practice-oriented person. For example, you can start your international management career in Abu Dhabi, continue that, say, in Hong Kong, and then move to LA, right? This is a global kind of mindset and global kind of perspective. And Moscow and HEC University, this is a very, you know, international kind of oriented city and international oriented university. And the kind of skills, the kind of knowledge that we give you here today, they are very aimed at that international experience. Uh, HEC University is the one of the leading universities in, uh, in the leading university in Russia, and one of the leading universities in, uh, in international area for, for example, creating the courses online for Coursera. And we are doing a lot to see that we're not uh, just staying in one part of the world. We're feeling that connectedness of the global world. And in this sense, it's not just about the courses, it's about the overall experience that you get in the university. Now, talking about the uh, professors, uh, the majority of our professors, they have a vast experience in international uh, operations, in international projects, in research, in practice. Uh, the <clears throat> What you can probably not see through just looking through the list is that each of those professors, they have a vast story of working in all kinds of uh, projects, uh, practical, business-oriented, research-oriented. Also, we have a, a large number of in, uh, guest professors that come and also have a very serious part in negotiating and uh, giving high-quality lectures to our students. Anna, can you help me with that? Yeah, I think in addition to what you just said, I can uh, um, list uh, three other uh, factors that uh, I would consider. Well, first of all, uh, we really bring to the school the best visiting uh, professors from abroad, from the best business schools. And when I say the best, I literally mean the best, best business schools. Then uh, in terms of opportunities for uh, exchanges, uh, and doing semesters abroad, again, we very carefully select the partner uh, universities and business schools that are available to our students. Normally, it would take you a big deal of efforts to yeah. get into any of these uh, schools, and that's a great chance. And the last factor that I would consider is the student mix. In all of our programs that we are talking about today, you will have a mix of students, students coming from around the world. And uh, these people, they don't speak any Russian uh, at all. So the environment um, and the culture that develops around this uh, program is really multicultural. Yeah, and I think it's also about the students' effort. So what uh, Moscow gives and HSC University gives and our faculty gives, it's a lot of opportunities. And by using those opportunities, you can really help yourself to continue the uh, career in any kind of global company, in any kind of uh, global operations, which I think is really, really the, the highest part of the value what we offer here. And uh, I want to ask uh, Vasily, 
Vasily, can you help us also with that, with your master program? What kind of uh, additional value does your uh, program offer in terms of international career? I think, uh, I think our program uh, is some, some maybe unique opportunity for students from different countries to communicate, uh, to study in the same language environment. Uh, the purpose, um, I think this purpose, but not in studying uh, language. And having networking effect. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sergey, can you help us also with your program, with the parallel degree program? Well, um, I'll maybe just add one point to that. Uh, English certainly in this case uh, should really be considered as just a means to communicate and to get new knowledge and skills. And it's really about the content of the program, not really about the the language that you should really focus on. So uh, in the sense what uh, Dmitry uh, and other speakers previously mentioned, I think here we aim at providing the highest quality. And in terms of English, well, again, we'll make sure that the teachers that uh, that teach our courses uh, do have a solid solid knowledge of this language, so they're able to communicate with both native English speakers and non-native English speakers. Understood. I hope that answers the question. And there is another one. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about scholarship that are based on score, maybe values? Mm -hmm. So can you answer that, Anna? Um, I would address um, the people interested in scholarships uh, to our website, mm -hmm. because the website uh, provides the uh, most uh, up-to-date uh, Absolutely. information. Absolutely. Uh, I think we can we can we can send again the link so. If you if you actually take a look at all of those questions, uh, you'll see that a lot of them were all already answered either in frequently asked questions or in specific sections of the admissions and that are accessible. We'll send you a link to help you with that, but the really check the, that out. Yeah. The basic principle, the higher the score, the bigger is the scholarship. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah, okay. Does it possible, uh, is it possible to combine studying with work? Uh, at the big data program, it's part-time program, I would say yes, and uh, well, uh, Vasily confirmed it. Uh, in uh, Master in International Management, uh, no, because it's a full-time program and it requires your full devotion, your full attention, and it's a huge investment of time and effort, and we expect you to do it into our program. But you will have lots of opportunities to do uh, part-time jobs uh, here with us at the university as research assistants, as uh, teaching assistants to our professors. So there will be lots of opportunities. Yes, and um, also about the, the, the combining with work, I think that is also a very important part of what uh, Alexander Dinin has said earlier. We had a lot of opportunities for students to um, have part-time jobs even in the university with our partners, with different projects, so there will be a plethora of possibilities. And I can take the next question yeah. uh, that uh, asks us about the uh, size of the essay and uh, the topic of the interview. So the uh, essay is expected to be three pages long, as I already said and the topic of the interview is uh, general um, should I prepare for speaking on business topics uh, yes uh, because uh, occasionally we might uh, ask your opinion about uh, well uh, current uh, business situation uh, economics uh, what's going around uh, in the world and uh, we would like to hear your opinion and to see how you express your opinion okay um, what about campuses for accommodation in Moscow? Again, there are a number of campuses uh, specially prepared for students, for international students, for Russian-based students. There is a list of those um, uh, um, places where you can live. And Dorms. Some, so, some of those you have seen, these dormitories, yes, exactly. The, the dormitories, some of those you have seen in the video that we have shown you. And uh, the list of them and the uh, distribution is actually based after your uh, already enrolled as a student. Mm -hmm. uh, and the list of those uh, places for accommodation are again available online and we can uh, send you 
link uh, just to uh, see uh, where you can find uh, the possible answer. Joshua yeah. is asking about uh, other master's uh, programs uh, like uh, general um, in business management and human resources and public administration. We've got lots of other master programs, uh, but unfortunately, uh, or maybe fortunately, if Joshua, you are speaking, uh, are able to, to speak in English, in Russian, they're all in Russian language. And actually, there is an opportunity for you. There is a, a special track if if you have if you want to choose that, and if you want to dedicate some time of your life in studying Russian, there is a possibility to join the preparatory faculty for one year. For one year, exactly. And learn is, Russian. Learn Russian, yes, and then to get actually even advantages and bonuses to um, to enter the university and to enter the programs and different kind of master programs. There is a um, PDF file, the booklet that you can look at that is available on when speak program exactly about that so you can open that and read about that it's a, actually a very good possibility specifically for people who want to see actually and enjoy the um, Moscow and feel that uh, specific and unique uh, cultural aspects of our country. Yeah. The next question is from Irina and she is asking about the dates for the uh, exam I think it's a very um, uh, easy question for us because this year as far as I understand all exams will take place uh, online August. In, in, online, August. in August, yes, exactly. So, Irina, you are free in July to go whenever is your destination and to take this uh, exam from you just, there. You, have, you just have to be very careful with the dates when you have to uh, submit your information just to register online and everything, uh, all the kind of um, interactions that you have to do with the HEC this year are done online. So just uh, read carefully what you, you have to do in admissions to master program and follow the procedures, register in your personal account, submit the information, don't miss the dates for consultations if you need some, and then uh, make sure uh, that uh, you don't miss the dates of the exam in August, yes. Mm -hmm. What happens if I don't pass the GMAT test? Well, nothing happens. You have a chance to do the GMAT-based exam uh, here with us at HEC University. Yes, exactly. And again, the dates for this exam is available also online that you can look at. They've been published just a couple of days ago. How many HSC master programs can I apply for? Two. This year, there are possibilities only to apply for two programs. This is the limitation that exists now this year. And do we have quotas for full scholarships? If we, if we are talking about uh, the Budget, international... Budget-sponsored places or full... If we're talking about international track, international uh, possibility for submission, so this is the, not the general track, but the international track. The um, main scholarship that existed, or the quotas, they've been used, but now we still have the uh, scholarships that allow you, uh, depending on your results that you got with the admission, uh, to get a, a discount, uh, this, the scholarship for, that goes for some part of the price of, uh, of the program, up to 50% of the program. So you can look at this. Again, all of the information about that is available online. Okay. Last question for you, I think. Yes. Uh, will HEC GMAT will be different from real GMAT and how? Well, uh, there will be a presentation, the consultation for uh, this online exam closer to the dates of exam. There is a uh, PDF file that describes this GMAT uh, test uh, that uh, HEC will be organizing. Its structure will be similar. And uh, there will be basically the communication part and the part with the, uh, with the math that you have to fill in. So read uh, the, the, the PDF file that describes and wait for the date of the consultation so that you can partake in it. And just as we are doing right now, ask your questions online to the uh, professors who will be dealing with this exam and maybe help you with what kind of, you know, some strategies, some recommendations on what would help to prepare for that. But the main information is in the PDF file that is located on the uh, Master Admissions uh, webpage. And the major difference, as far as I understand, that uh, our test will be shorter than... Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. So GMAT test. It's, it's only... Uh, 120 minutes, so it's uh, two hours as compared to the GMAT test, which is uh, larger. Three right? hours and a half. Yes, exactly. Yeah, usually. Okay, I, actually, uh, these are all of the questions. And uh, I must uh, thank, first of all, uh, my dear colleagues 
uh, Anna, Sergei, Vasily, thank you very much for being here. And I also want to pass my warmest uh, my thanks to all of the guests of this online streaming. This has been a wonderful evening. I hope that you've enjoyed some of the uh, information and materials that we gave you today from uh, Moscow. Uh, it's already 8 o'clock in, in here and it started just a little bit uh, getting darker. But still, everything is green and nice and... Uh, Time to go for a walk. To, well, not so much. We're still on the isolation period. We hope that you're staying uh, on a healthy side. We hope safe. that you're safe and you're comfortable in your homes. And we're really ready to uh, see you whenever the isolation uh, is over to welcome you in our uh, campus. Uh, we'll be waiting for your questions. Don't hesitate to send us emails to contact with us with, with all the possible ways. And uh, if you're uh, Russian speaking, person you you can opt for subscribing for our, our social networks we soon will be launching also English based and even uh, foreign nationals it, yeah. yes exactly yeah exactly. we're doing a great job uh, providing all possible communication channels to us Absolutely. we've got a great website with a lot of information do not hesitate to check or double check yeah. it again and all our contacts are on the website please do write to us ask us questions get in touch thank you very much and I hope to see you soon, maybe on September, and whenever we'll be launching new kinds of connection with you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.